Hello. Many of you know that here in Marburg we have been inverting our classroom for several years now. We have been using digital teaching and learning scenarios for some time and we are no longer sage on stage but guide on the side helping our students to deepen their knowledge in our in-class scenarios. So for quite some time now we have been inverting our classroom where content delivery and content acquisition are carried out online in a self-guided fashion and the in-class phase is primarily used for practicing and deepening. This model goes back to the influential publication by Maureen Lake, Glenn Platt and Michael Treglia who suggested the term inverted classroom. In a second publication they also used the term classroom flip and later terms such as flipped classroom were added by other authors. Why do we have such a mixture of terms? Shouldn't we have one term since the idea of inverting the two phases of teaching and learning is essentially the same? Well, I want to argue in the following that there are in fact two different settings for inverting the classroom. One is the high school setting and one is the university setting. Let us look at these in more detail. There are several parameters that distinguish the teaching scenarios that are used at high school from those used at most universities. Take for example the average age of the target groups. Whereas most high school kids are younger than 18, the standard student at university has come of age and is in most cases older than 18. Or take the class size. High school classes are generally smaller than those at universities where you can have classes with several hundreds of students. As a consequence, university teachers often do not even know their students' names. Furthermore, class time is different and normally much shorter at high school where classes of 45 minutes for example are the rule at least here in Germany at university it's 60 minutes or even more giving us more time to practice and to deepen particular problems another difference concerns the rhythm at university teaching and learning is normally organized according to a weekly rhythm at school the learning units come in daily or at least several times per week. And what about the use of a learning management system? Well, all universities have one and most colleagues normally use it. Whereas at school it's still the exception rather than the rule. And then we have the possibility of using tutors at university. A common method but this is not known at school and last but not least there are differences between schools and universities as far as the technical equipment that can be used in the classroom is concerned. In other words there are different parameters affecting teaching and learning scenarios at school or at university. Thus there are also different conditions for the realization of an inverted classroom. Hence, it can well be justified to use different terms for what I think are slightly different models. Let's look at these different models or variants. Inverting the classroom at the level of high school has commonly become known as flipped classroom. That is a scenario where simple videos are used in phase one and the homework, well, homework in inverted commas, is done in phase two in class. At the university level, we refer to the model as the inverted classroom, where now the material available in phase one is more complex, classes are much larger, and tutors may also be added to the in-class phase. A special variant that we use here in Marburg adds a mastery component to the model that is a system of electronic tests by means of which our students can show mastery prior to each in-class meeting. 
Using the inverted classroom mastery model, we bridge the gap between phase one and two in order to find out how well prepared our students join us in the in-class phase. So, we have two main variants, the flipped classroom for high schools and the inverted classroom for universities. Whereas it would be problematic for the flipped classroom to integrate permanent testing prior to each in-class phase, this is no problem for the inverted classroom. Its weekly rhythm at universities makes it possible to add a component where students are offered online tests to show mastery prior to each in-class meeting. And this is then the inverted classroom mastery model. Well, here is a little bit more information about these models, especially about the literature associated with them. The idea of calling the high school model flipped classroom originally goes back to Wesley Baker and a publication around the year 2000, but it was taken up by the two North American high school teachers, Aaron Sams and Jonathan Bergman, who described the development of their model in their 2012 book and they also published an article about it in our first inverted classroom conference volume. The label inverted classroom originally goes back to Maureen Laig and her colleagues. We already talked about this. Well, we have used this model since 2006 and have taken up this label in our 2012 publication about e-learning at German universities. Well, and the addition of the mastery component where on the basis of formative electronic assessment students can demonstrate mastery but sometimes fail to do so. Hmm. This was first mentioned in our second inverted classroom conference volume. It was awarded excellency in higher education in 2013 and in fact I took it up in my new book which came out a few days ago. So here is an overview of the publication starting with Leg and her colleagues and a number of publications where I could make some contributions and the high school variant by Aaron Sams and Jonathan Bergman. They all suggest that the inversion of the traditional phases of education leads to significant learning effects. So, to sum up, essentially we all refer to the same thing. A classroom where the traditional phases of teaching and learning have been swapped, to use a neutral term here. At high school they simply have been flipped with almost no additional components between the phases leading to the flipped classroom. At university level the phases have not just been flipped in a one-to-one -one fashion but they have been inverted either fully or partially leading to several variants and stages in between from simple tests to complex mastery components. So we believe that the two terms flipped and inverted have both their justification. Flipped classroom for high schools and inverted classroom for universities. Thanks for listening and see you again.